the Macaui, and the, the resolution was on the link right the way through the alleyways down through um, Pizza Hut and um, and Kentucky Fried Chicken, and it had nothing about that road, as you quite lo- rightly said. So that's where I go right back to what I said half an hour ago. The officers took that as being that we didn't want anything done with that road, that the the swerve was going to be in there. So I'm quite happy to finish this, Mr Chairman, in saying that... The officers are the ones that are um, suggested that we just do a black round there. It's not set in concrete. It's just for future planning. It's not saying that that's going to be it and leave it up to in the future. Just have one black line going around there. Just a point on that. The reason that we never... It's not the officers' fault. None of us, from what I understand, by that resolution, even took into consideration the wiggle. No. Some of us just... Not, not it has been there from day one. Yeah, I know it is. I we understood is. that D, which said... Sorry? We, we took that whole resolution right through to the end of the re- reasons correct. as the reasons putting a flavour to the yeah. to the first part of the resolution, which says, uh, um, reflect the direction of the structure plan for... Yeah. And that was what was in the structure plan for the connectivity. Having two roads, having one still out here by the lake and all that wasn't going to reflect the connectivity and that's why in the draft it had always had a wiggle and we hadn't had any specific discussion on taking that out other than working on the resolution and the reasons. Okay, so if I come back to what Councillor Gathergood's comments were, that according to her the resolution states that there's, that option's still open. Are you guys happy with if we leave it as it is and that... Does that allay your fears, Councillor Kelly? Covers it? Well, Mr Chairman, I think it's very easy... We can't change these resolutions. I know we can't, and that's why I've referred to this resolution and asked um, everybody to have a look at it, because it clearly says, regardless of uh, Councillor Downard's um, interpretation, it clearly says in the reason, A, that it does link to the lakefront. The linkage to the lakefront is one of the most important themes of the whole structure plan, linking the commercial area to the lakefront, but nowhere is there a resolution on that road between the end of Tongariro Street and Titi Raupunga Street. And what I've suggested to try and get us through this quickly is that we mark both options, have it headed up as future, uh, sorry, as proposed, and let's get on with the key part of the resolution, which is developing a master plan for this whole area. Now, a master plan to me, and please tell me if I'm wrong, Mr Gibbs, uh, or Mr Carroll, a master plan must include roading, correct? Yes. It's an absolutely essential element. A master plan must include roading. So that's why I thought we accepted the wording of that unanimously, because it obviously includes roading. You hit it on the nail by saying thought. So anyway, anyway Councillor Barton, you had your hand up, then I'm going to go to Mr Carroll because he's frowning again. Uh. There's got to be a way solution for this, guys, and I'm going to get to it in the next two minutes. I thought we'd made it too. Mr Chairman, as the mover of that resolution, it was my understanding with that that, yes, we need to be looking into the future as to what changes that we can make for the betterment of that area, for um, greater public use and enjoyment, but that until we draw up suggestions with a master plan, it should stay the same way it is, and that careful thought should be put into it at the time for the uh, continuation of events which use that particular area. So my view, my own personal view of that was that it was just leaving it as it was until such time as we could actually concentrate on that particular area as such, as opposed to looking at the whole Taupo urban industrial, commercial industrial structure plan. And about 15, 20 minutes ago now, I also referred to, or I was going to refer to the map on page 51, where we'd made a a note uh, earlier on today um, that it was, there were differences in there from the map on page 19, and that there were also items in there that needed to be dealt with. And that was one of the ones, one of the maps we parked. So I'm bringing that to your attention. And now I think we should just move on. Again, I, I never ever said that there was no linkage between that um, resolution to the lakefront and all that. But I do believe that we need to keep that 
curve in there because it does give options into the future. You know, that, it, it, it says the intent all the way through our structure plan that we're going to do something there. It follows on out of that resolution the way I understand it. I think to bring this to some sort of finality, it's, um, and I'm going to have to go along and agree with Councillor Gatherwood, and see on page 50 on the pink copy, development of a more detailed master plan. And that master plan could, could come back and say, leave the roads as they are. And we're going to sit here and argue all night because there's a quink in the road. The resolution, so long as it's uh, written in that structure plan, so people can understand what our resolution stated at start. Otherwise, we're going to be here all night. No, I'm not. I'm going to adjourn the meeting and go home. Councillor McKelvey. Mr Chairman, I suggest that perhaps an easier way to get around this, in line with what you've just said, is on all the maps that have the wiggle, yes. including the drawing, which is a plan on page 50, you have an arrow to all of them saying, subject to future master planning. As per Council's resolution. As per yes. Council's resolution, or something. And you're all happy so with that. that. Yes. Quite yes. Clear right, done. On all of them. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Is there anything else in the structure plan? Please. Um, there, was the, there was my request right at the beginning, Mr Chairman, yes. and we may be able to refer it back to a, yes. a plan that was a bit controversial earlier on. Remember I said that it was pretty important so that the um, average Joe Bloggs reading this plan knows where the town centre environment is, um, etc. Now, if you could just refer me to that map at the back, which shows the town centre environment that we had a bit of discussion about. Page 57. Oh, page 57. Um, we all agreed right at the beginning that there would be a, a simple map showing some of the uh, references in that first introduction. And I'm just wondering whether it could be combined with this one. That's all, and I'll leave it to the staff to work it through. Yeah, we had a good discussion on that. All right. Um, but I do, I do think we need a very simple map that's not um, tied back to district plan that just shows things like Tongariro Street, the Tongariro Domain, Riverside right. Park, etc., etc. It would be better to have an aerial photograph or yeah. something with a dark yeah, line yeah, around. Why not? It. Whatever, Mr. Gibbs, do it. That'd be great. Anything else, please? There's nothing else, no comments. I'm going to go back to the suggested resolution. And if you want me to read it out, I'll read it out so you all refresh on it. <coughs> if you mind, I'm going to read it out anyway. One, that the amendment urban, Taupo Urban Commercial and Industrial Structure Plan September 2010 be adopted subject to the inclusion of a new section related to the Civic Heart and consequential amendments to the actions and priority sections. Two, that there will be no council admin building on the Tongariro North Domain Recreational Reserve, and I move accordingly. Seconded. Councillor McKelvey is seconded. Is there any discussion? Councillor Bernard. Can I just make a request due to the um, um, extensive changes on the airport? Would it be possible if I could see the draft changes. I don't want to change anything, but I'd just be interested to see them before you put them into the final document. I will allow that. Any further discussion on the motion? Yeah. There being none, I put the motion. All in favour say aye. 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 Against? It's carried. Thank you. Now, because I still have to deal with the civic heart issue, or this council has to, I'm asking Mr Green for a little bit of advice here, and I'm the one that's supposed to know everything. Technically, I would then close this structure plan process off. There's still an outstanding issue, so I am in my rights to adjourn it. Uh, Mr. Green? Yes. Or oh, Mr. Morell? No. Could, could adjourn it, Mr. June, or you could completely just close it? Yeah. And come back again? Yeah, adjourn. Come back again. Councillor McKelvey? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I wonder if you'd consider adjourning it because the staff. They've had a very big day today, and they may like to put in front of us the final, final document just to have a quick look at, um, to make sure that they've got their amendments interpreted correctly, without any, you know, formal resolving, but just a quick discussion with anyone who's interested. The other thing I wonder, Mr. Chairman, there are two aspects, and I've said this about five times now, and it's been minuted. There are two aspects of the structure plan, which 
and to be clear, it's the development of the Great Lakes Centre and the future development of the Museum and Art Gallery, um, which don't necessarily need to be subject to any further structure planning activity because they are not full council matters. Those assets and those venues are owned by the northern ratepayers. Disagree. Hang on, please. I'm going to make a decision very shortly. Go ahead, Councillor Kelly. Under the current um, committee structure and policies of this council, the Great Lakes Centre and the Museum Art Gallery are the are assets of the northern ratepayers and there is one outstanding aspect of the structure plan that needs to be furthered by council. Um, I certainly didn't vote for it, but that's the investigation of whether or not a future council office building should be on the domain south somewhere of the Great Lakes Centre and library. And I'm wondering whether at this stage, Mr Chairman, we can put the two other matters, the Great Lakes Centre and the um, development of the uh, Museum and Art Gallery, um, whether we can recommend that be considered by the incoming council. Excuse me, Mr Green. Thank you. And I know what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to make a decision. I know what I'm going to do. No, <laughs> Councillor McKelvey. That's enough. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, I wonder if we could make some decision on that because that would be particularly helpful uh, to separate out those three matters because I believe that two of them, now that they've been separated out from the so-called new civic council offices, are no longer the responsibility of council. Councillor Kelly, I know all that. I've, uh, I've seen my advice. I've you. made my decision. Councillor Downer, do you want to say anything? Because I'm going to tell you exactly what's going yeah, on. Yeah, I know, but I just want to say, uh, thank you, Mr Chairman, I just want to say it's a slap in the face that you think that our facilities, the Great Lakes Centre and the museum, aren't a district-wide facility to the Mangakini, Pokani and also the Turangi residents or any other small pocket of residents in our Taupo district. Well, technically, they are paid by the northern area until such time as that the system changes. But what I intend to do now... I've listened to Councillor McKelvey. I intend this is what I intend to do. I am going to close this off now, the structure plan this meeting. I'm going to close it off. And all those issues with regards to the Civic Heart, when the staff come back, the incoming council or the new council can open up a new council meeting and discuss them. And there's no problem with that. I'm not breaking any rules or guidelines, according to Mr Morell. So that's what I intend to do. Uh, this meeting will be closed very shortly. And once again, I would like to pass on to Mr Green, especially to Mr Gibbs and, and um, Mr Carroll and uh, the other lovely lady there, I think Miss Williams that was here, and all the other staff that have been involved with this structure plan and it's, it's been a long drawn out process and you've done an excellent job and well done under the circumstances. I would also like to say to my fellow councillors, uh, and that includes His Worship the Mayor, thank you for your indulgence throughout this whole process. Even at times you um, stretch my... Uh, Patience to the limit, but I still smile. Doesn't mean to say I still love you all. I might hate you in a minute. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, thank you once again. And now Mr. this Chairman, meeting. Mr. Chairman, just before you close the yes. meeting, um, please, on behalf of all the other elected members, um, I would like to admit it um, that we thank you for your indulgence, we thank you for your patience, and we thank you for your fair chairmanship of a very, very long process that has taken Taupo probably about two decades at least into the future and hopefully will benefit the economic outcomes of this town as well. So Thanks. could we have that minuted, please, Thank Mr. Thank you, Councillor McKelvey, and for everybody in this room and everybody out there that's watching it, I didn't pay or anything.